Hi everyone, I have a special treat for you today. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Oh no. Here's the special treat, what do you think? Yeah, I'm not sure what you thought when you saw this. Have you ever come to the dinner table and dinner just didn't look right? Maybe mom or dad forgot a key ingredient in their recipe to make it taste good. Um, maybe like my cake, it fell apart when they took it out of the pan or dropped it. Well, whatever happened, it wasn't right. And they decided to serve it to you anyway. Ugh. If it tastes good, let me tell you. Mm, mm, mm. It's still good. If it tastes good, there's usually no harm done. Ugly food can still taste good. But sometimes things go so bad that we have no choice but to throw it out and start over. Moses was in the same position in our story today. Moses was God's chosen man to lead his people out of slavery. And as a prince of Egypt, Moses could have done a lot for Israel. But Moses didn't do things God's way. He killed a man and tried to cover it up. As a result, he ended up in exile. That means he ended up having to go away for 40 years. Moses worked as a shepherd. He tended sheep, living with the memory of what he did. And then God called him to return to Egypt and lead his people. Let's look at today's video and learn what happened to Moses. Moses was a very young child when he was taken from the care of his mother to live in the royal courts of Egypt. Although raised a prince, he would never forget the family to which he was born. Moses was a Hebrew, the special people of God's promises. The faith of the Hebrews remained in Moses' heart even as he grew up surrounded with all the power, riches, and pleasures that Egypt had to offer. Forty years passed, and Moses grew from a boy into a man. But even though he was raised in the Egyptian way of trusting riches, horses, and chariots, God continued to draw Moses' thoughts away from Egypt and toward his fellow Hebrews. One day, he went out to see his people who were forced to work as slaves. The things he saw were terrible, including an Egyptian taskmaster beating a Hebrew slave. When Moses saw this, it broke his heart and filled him with anger. It was as if this man were attacking his own brother. Moses waited until he thought no one was watching. Then he charged toward the Egyptian, killed him, and buried his body in the sand. But as Moses would soon find out, someone had seen him, and word of his crime spread quickly. The next day, Moses went out to his people again, but this time he saw two Hebrews fighting with each other. In disbelief, he confronted them. Men, you are brothers. Why do you hurt each other in this way? One of them replied, Who made you a ruler and judge over us? Are you going to kill me the way you killed the Egyptian? Moses was terrified. Everyone knew his awful secret. Meanwhile, Pharaoh was furious when he heard what Moses had done. By defending a Hebrew slave over an Egyptian taskmaster, Moses had rebelled against Pharaoh himself. Pharaoh ordered that Moses be captured and killed immediately. But Moses had already fled far away into the wilderness. Moses left Egypt behind. But this was just the beginning of his story. Moses ran for his life until he came to a place called Midian, where he rested at a community well. Seven women arrived at the well to get water, but they were driven away by a band of rival shepherds. Moses sprang into action to defend the sisters, 
He quickly defeated the shepherds, then helped the girls water their flock of sheep. When Jethro, the girl's father, heard about what Moses had done, he insisted that Moses be brought home and given a hero's welcome. Over the next 40 years, Moses would find a new home in the land of Midian and in the household of Jethro. In time, Jethro gave one of his daughters to Moses as a bride, and Moses started a family. As the years passed, Moses would learn humility and the strength of a good shepherd. When the time was just right, God would call upon Moses to lead one of the greatest deliverance stories ever. Moses didn't get to return as prince. He had to start over. He was an outsider to his people and to the people he once called his family. But Moses did things God's way this time, and he got to lead, the, the, lead Israel to freedom. When we get in trouble, the worst thing we can try to do is to cover it up. We need to admit our mistakes and accept the consequences. That means accept the punishment that we're going to get for having chosen to do something wrong even if that means starting over. God is willing to give us a second chance, but only if we're willing to go back to the beginning and do it His way. There are things happening in our world right now that people are doing that are wrong. They shouldn't try to cover it up, but they should admit their wrongs, accept their consequences, and allow God to help them be different. This week's game is Trouble. When you play the game Trouble the next time, remember the worst thing to do is cover up the wrong you've done. Don't forget to visit the website for the rest of the lesson, the activities and games, and have a great week.